Yeah, I, I really like this album. It, there's so much stuff you can sort of sink your ears into uh, with the music on this disc. And the fact that it's all brand new, that it was all commissioned by you two gentlemen, is uh, it's really just, I think, a wonderful album that a lot of people need to hear. So we're going to talk about it right now. But before we do that, I wonder if you could introduce yourselves to our listeners and tell us a little bit how you came together as the duo noir. Absolutely. So my name's Thomas, and uh, and I came to the guitar after hearing a recording of Segovia playing, and then uh, years later, I somehow ended up at the Yale School of Music, uh, and it was a summer program at the Norfolk Music Festival, and Chris was there uh, as another guitarist who was about to join me at the Yale School of Music, and our teacher, Ben Verdry, decided to put us together as a duo to premiere a piece written by this Juilliard composer, Raymond Lustig, uh, and then Chris, do you want to take it from there? Uh, yeah, so you know, I started playing guitar when I was when I was around twelve years old, um, playing rock guitar like many people, and uh, then continued up until college, and then uh, started playing classical. And then uh, you know, after Thomas and I met at the Norfolk, and we went to Yale together, um, we kind of just started working a lot more with Ray Lustig and commissioning him to write more pieces uh, for the guitar. Uh, for two guitars and you know we just started realizing that our voice we really both enjoyed new music on classical guitar and that you know that we wanted a certain style of uh, music written for the classical guitar that wasn't so guitar centric that sounded like that was written uh, for the guitar by a guitarist uh, which is kind of what we were looking for in this album as well kind of uh, you know I'd say most of the composers except for one uh, are non-guitarists which kind of, I think, what gives it that unique sound and kind of, you know, different flavor of, of throughout each track. Well, it's interesting that you say that because one of my questions was in listening to this, you know, what's the difference between working with a composer who is a performer on your instrument as well and working with composers who maybe have written for the instrument but don't really play it? Do you, do you sense a difference? And then what what is... What is it that you are attracted to about composers that are not guitarists? Well, that's that's a great question. I think I think we actually really intentionally chose not to get a lot of guitarist uh, composers for the album. Like uh, we really sought out people who had no experience writing for the guitar or who definitely did not play the guitar, who were composers first um, and foremost. So they all went to like these great composition programs around the country or around the world. Um, and the difference between a guitarist composer and a, I guess we'll just say, a composer composer, um, a lot of the guitarist composers you find are actually self-taught composers. So they, they, they're really accomplished guitarists who then start just playing music and writing music for fun, um, whereas composers do very rigorous training. So I guess if I had to boil it down to one thing, it's just the, the composers who aren't guitarists come up with ideas that are so uh, strikingly different from what's already out there. Um, and I think you feel that when you listen to the album. Like, it's music and sounds for two guitars that I have never heard something sound like that before. And it's really cool. The The downside of it is that it's, you know, like, this is, it's kind of a cool process, but it's a lot of work kind of showing the composers what the guitar can do. Like, um, this one composer on the album, Courtney Bryan, came over to my apartment in Harlem, and we just sat down at the keyboard. I had my guitar, and I just showed her dozens and dozens of things that the guitar could do and she was asking about this and that um, and that's just one example of like uh, kind of the process of working with a non-guitarist composer yeah Sorry. Uh, also I was just going to say about uh, working with non-guitarist composers you know you just get a lot of you know different and unusual sounds come out of the guitar because um, I think when a guitarist composes for a guitar they know the instrument so well that they kind of use things that work very well. You know, there's just certain techniques and certain like movable chords that you can use if you're, if you know the guitar very well. And a non-guitarist is just going to come at it completely open, you know, like an open book. And they're just going to do things that, that usually wouldn't be done. And we were so lucky. We've always been really lucky with the composers that we worked with, because another thing that happens when you work with a, with the non-guitarist composer and is that, you know, a lot of times you'll get something that is completely unplayable. And almost everything that we got, you know, like we, we sat down and started playing it. You know, it was very little editing that we had to do. And, you know, I don't know if, if we're just lucky or if we picked 
composers that were just like, you know, meant to write for the guitar, but you know, it's, it was, it's been really, really great, you know, just to sit down and be able to play through the stuff, you know, just little edits here and there, but you know, I, I, we didn't have any like seven note chords, you know, things that like, you know, with too many ha- fingers that would have to play or anything. So yeah, it's been great. Yeah. Or you may just be extremely virtuosic as well. You know, it's probably that it's probably that. <laughs> <laughs> Now, it should be said that uh, all the composers on this disc are female composers, and I assume that was the conscious choice on your part. Absolutely. Um, and and it, was, it was a series of events leading up to this moment, this epiphany in 2015 that we had, um, of just kind of starting to like notice. And I, I can't think of an analogy, but it's just like one day you wake up and then you see the world. It's, it's like the Matrix, that scene at the end where Neo, he like, all of a sudden he like comes back and he sees the world in code, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and for the first time for me, like after, you know, I went to this Eric Clapton guitar marathon and it was like 15 acts over four hours and every single one of them was a man. And then this major guitar society announced its concert season and it was all men playing music by all men. My eyes were just opened and I, I just couldn't see things differently. And, uh, and it would have been wrong for us to continue to kind of perpetuate this kind of male dominance in classical music. So we decided to do something about it yeah. uh, and got this grant and started seeking out some of the most talented composers we could find who just happened to be women. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. And, then, and that was an intentional choice, too, because, you know, it's not like we're the first musicians to ever make like a, an album of one demographic or gender. Um, but I think we intentionally wanted to make sure that it was all new music written for our time and kind of to speak to, to the era we're living in and the technology that we're living in, um, which is a cool thing about Mary Kiyomjian's piece using uh, electronics. Right. Um, but also that it wasn't like tokenism, you know, like it's not just that the composers are women because um, people have done that. And, and a lot of times the music hasn't been very good, which is a disservice to, to trying to, to heal this kind of gender disparity. But it was that the music is awesome the composers are really incredibly brilliant um and they just happen to be women and that's kind of that was really important to us yeah absolutely and and, and i agree with you 100 percent about the brilliance of the, the the pieces on this disc and they're so different and so varied there's a lot of uh mystery there's a lot of uh, almost i would say exoticism but also a lot of humor going on in these pieces and, and I wonder if um, you can tell us a little bit about that, that commissioning process. You mentioned you got a grant, but then do you identify these composers and you say, uh, this is what we're looking for, this is the amount of time? Were, were you thinking of putting this all together on, a, on an album? Was that part of the original commission? Yeah, it was. We did want, we did want to kind of like have it culminate into an album. So we were very conscious of, of thinking of a time frame for each piece. So we did, you know, kind of tell the composers that we wanted 10 minutes long, um, you know, and we did, it was very, very slight guidelines. And I think that the composers did their research and they knew what we were into. And, you know, I, that's why, you know, a lot of the music is dark and mysterious and, and humorous is because we're both kind of into a little bit of darker music and we're both a little bit goofy <laughs> and, you know, and we, and we, you know, we had a lot of conversations with the composers before they wrote for us. And, and I think that they were all very mindful and conscious of what they were doing when they were writing for us and that they were thinking, they were, they were really thinking about, about what we liked, who we were when they were writing these pieces. Yeah. I have to say duo noir sounds much better than the uh, dark and goofy duo, but I see what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about some of the pieces on here, because I, I really want to share these with our listeners. Now, the title piece, The Night Triptych, three different movements here, by, can you pronounce the composer's name for me? Sure. Golfam Kayam. Okay. Just like it looks. Golfam Kayam. Now, she is a guitarist, right? She is the guitarist composer you were talking about. And, yeah, and, and she is an interesting story on the album, because we had actually gotten enough music to complete the album and we were just preparing to record it. And then out of nowhere, um, she had friended me on Facebook and, and then, uh, you know, I accepted the friend request. And then like a couple of weeks later, she posted this NPR feature about her 
and her music with her clarinet and guitar duo in Iran that was released on ECM Records. And I, and I checked out the article, and then I listened to the recording, and I was blown away by how awesome the writing was and how like complete I had never heard anything like it. So we just we just decided like, hey man, her music is incredible. Let's just reach out to her. Yeah. And we just contacted her, told her about the project, uh, asked her if she'd be interested. She said yes, and then she wrote such an awesome, incredible piece that we ended up naming the the album after it because it perfectly in, encapsulated what we were feeling uh, musically and conceptually about the album. So she was just phenomenal. Yeah, and and I think her title speaks to the music a little bit, the night uh, triptych, because it's it's kind of hypnotic. The music it kind of uh, wraps you up inside of itself. It's a really interesting listen. Um, let's talk about some of the other works on here. Uh, Clarice Assad, of course, she has sort of a guitar pedigree through her father, uh, Sergio Assad. And, and her piece, entitled Hocus Pocus, has a lot of humor in there. Can you talk a little bit about that that piece? Yeah, uh, um, you know, well, that's one of my favorite pieces. And I think it's really, you know, it's a piece that, you know, at first we were kind of hesitant to uh, to play for, you know, kind of like a general audience or a classical guitar audience because of the middle movement, which features, you know, about four minutes of spoon solo <laughs> tra- traded off between the two of us. And, you know, it's funny because we recently played in Pennsylvania and, and we were debating like, you know, is this, is this too crazy? And we ended up doing it. And after the concert, I'd say that everyone who came up to us to talk to us about the program said that that was the highlight of the program, you know, and, and we kind of have our own uh, <laughs> um, spoon solo you know, mine mine is a little bit uh, darker, and then and then Thomas pulls out two spoons and makes it funny. So like, you know, it really kind of balances out. We we thought a lot about the spoon solo, so that's fun. And um, then you know, the first movement has a lot of different extended guitar techniques and and a lot of trading off, really kind of like shooting in between the two of us. And then um, the third movement is the the least humorous of of them all. And, it's kind of like a five minute uh, marathon of, you know, really fast scales and really cool arpeggios. You know, it's a really great, well balanced piece. And it's a piece that we got and was completely fingered and just ready to go. We really had, we really had like very little back and forth. You know, there's a couple of tiny things that, that we changed. And Clarice was so great to work with. She's like, I love it. You guys are awesome. We're like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's the the best of uh, all worlds i guess yeah it comes together like that yeah. yeah i was really struck by that last piece by gabrielle smith i've heard some of her other music and and this one named after a poem that she had written loop the fractal hold of rain which in itself is sort of like a you know a, an enigma wrapped in a mystery kind of title but l- listening to the the piece when it begins i thought it was somebody making noise with their mouths instead of the guitar at first ah. it's a really interesting approach can you talk about that a little bit uh yeah sure uh, there's an interesting story about that um but but first i meant gabriella like uh this wonderful composer who helped us after we got the grant from the diller quail school of music sarah kirkland snyder turned us on to gabriella and it turned out uh she was having her piece premiered by bang on a can in new york city at merkin hall uh sorry kaufman hall and i just i showed up and I, I heard her piece premiere. It was gorgeous. I went up to her afterwards, um, and we had been emailing at that point. Um, and she agreed to write for us. And once we got the piece, um, she intentionally decided not to make it virtuosic with like crazy left hand scale stuff, but to make it more about kind of these developing grooves and loops of arpeggios and stuff. And once we got the piece, that opening section that you thought sounded like someone singing, she sent us a video of what she was talking, like what she was going for, of her playing it on a steel string guitar. So she's like holding the guitar in this really weird contorted way. Her right hand is over the neck of the guitar. Her left hand is holding a slide and then sliding up the strings with this glass slide um, in a really crazy way. Um, and, and it was really cool working with her because he was able to kind of demonstrate some things because she plays the ukulele for fun. So she had like an intimate knowledge of how the guitar kind of works fundamentally. Yeah, but no spoons, right? No spoons. Not, not for that one. <laughs> But but we do use a slide, so. <laughs> yeah. As far as extended techniques go, I mean, what is the the most adventurous thing that you've been asked to do by a, a modern composer? Huh. That's that's a good question, you know. Um, 
I'm let's let's put it to a vote, Chris. I'm going to say it's Golfum asking us to use chopsticks and a pencil eraser. I, you know, honestly, I, that's exactly what I was going to go for. I've never used. I mean, it wasn't even chopsticks. It's like it's a barbecue stick. When I when I looked at the score and it said uh, take out barbecue stick here, I was like, what? <laughs> You know, and it was it was kind of cool because you know it really kind of almost she left it up to our interpretation and yeah. and uh, a wooden stick I'm assuming yeah a wooden, a wooden barbecue stick yeah. that yeah I had to do my research on barbecue sticks actually and for my part she just wrote take out mallet and and then I had to go through this process of researching different types of mallets I could hit the guitar with until I finally discovered like the exact type of pencil I needed. And the exact type of eraser that I should put on top of the pencil mm-hmm. to get the sound that you hear in the uh, in the second movement, quasi furioso. I'll, I'll resist pointing out the irony that your last name is Mallet as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we usually just ignore that. <laughs> it could, you know, be a completely different meaning that she had in mind there. Well, <laughs> the, <laughs> leave that for the next album. Speaking of which, I mean, what are your plans? Uh, what What are your plans for the uh, the future with this uh, duo? Well, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if it's a secret yet, um, but we are we are conceptualizing our next album. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be different, uh, but it's going to be more all all new commissions um, from around the world uh, from very very different composers uh, that we have in mind. Uh, but yeah, so stay tuned. We'll let you know about that. Excellent. We're definitely we definitely do want to keep though on the track of bringing new music to guitar duo because there have been a lot of people bringing uh new music for uh solo guitar and Sharon Isbin has been a champion of of guitar and orchestra and you know I I just I think part of our mission now is is to bring new music for two guitars yeah that's great so, yeah well uh the album is, is called night triptych and this is from new focus recordings right it's just out this month or last month actually uh if folks want to connect with you uh on the internet social media where do they go uh we've got a web page www.duonoir uh with an e at the end um so n-o-i-r-e dot com and we also are on facebook Okay, great to hear it. Well, congratulations on this wonderful album. Thomas Flippin and Christopher Mallett, guitarists for Duo Noir. And uh, we will link to your website from our website as well at wgte.org. Best of luck with this album and with your future efforts, and thanks for joining us here on FM91. Thanks so much. Thank you for having us. ¶¶ 